All right, yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. Uh, we are going to be doing the NCAA tournament challenge thing on ESPN. I just do it on ESPN because it's easy and I can track it with my phone. Uh, but we're going to be doing a wide gamut of different brackets of different things. Um, this is just the initial one. Uh, the Hapage recording thing in the bottom just has to be there because this is how I'm recording. Um, so this is the initial bracket. This video will probably be the longest out of all of them. I'm going to go over what I think, uh, just a couple of different things like that, and why certain teams are what. So we'll start out with that. Let me go. Let me hop into this. Uh, so first of all, my real question is, is Kentucky has the same SEC record as Texas A&M. They, they beat Texas A&M today to win the SEC. They played a better non-conference schedule. And um, I'm wondering why Kentucky is a four seed and Texas A&M is a three seed, wherever Texas A&M is. Are they down here? Yeah, there they are. That makes no sense to me, why Texas A&M is a three and Kentucky is a four. Uh, also, another thing is why is Michigan, why is, uh, Michigan State, um, if Oregon is the technical number four, number one seed, as they said, why is Michigan State not playing in that bracket? Also, why Michigan State's not a number one seed is the real question. But my real question is, why are the two seeds so jumbled up? Why is Xavier out against North Carolina when Kansas is a number one seed? Why is Villanova playing in Kansas' bracket? It, the number two seeds don't make any sense compared to the number one seed. Why, why Michigan State isn't in Oregon's bracket? Villanova should be in uh, Virginia's bracket, Oklahoma should be in North Carolina's bracket, and Xavier should be in Kansas's bracket. But we're just going to ignore that. Uh, another thing is, um, where was it? What was it? Um, Indiana is kind of, I get it because they got beat by Michigan in the tournament, but they were a projected number three seed before they lost to Michigan, so falling all the way to a five. Uh, kind of surprised me. Uh, UConn getting a nine seed kind of surprised me uh, after they won their tournament today. Um, they were projected not in the field, so we'll keep that in mind. But uh, before their whole tournament started, but a nine seed, I would have thought they'd at least get like a seven. Uh, that's a little surprising to me. Uh, Utah holding a three seed even after that embarrassment that they had last night to Oregon surprised me. There were definitely some four seeds more deserving of a three than them, such as Kentucky. Um, uh, Iowa State even. Uh, I like Iowa State over U more than Utah uh, as a three seed. And uh, Cal getting a four seed, I get it. Um, Maryland, I think, is a better team than Cal. Um, but no real arguments there with Cal getting a four they're arguably one of the more talented teams in college basketball. One of the top probably five teams, you could argue, that they're talent-wise in, the, uh, in college basketball. Uh, is there anything else here that I wanted to cover? Uh, I guess Syracuse getting in over Monmouth, Tulsa also, even Michigan. Um, if you guys know me, I do like Michigan. Uh, but them getting Michigan getting in Michigan had a better case Michigan was in according to most experts before the season start or before the tournament started so I'm not really surprised that they're in but Michigan doesn't have a great record against the field they have some horrible losses um, some of their losses I have watched almost all their games so some of their losses like the one to Purdue it looks bad if you just look at the final score but they played them tough in the first half they gave up some bad scores and then in the second half they closed it to six and you know some of those runs you come back into the game and then you just can't finish it I've watched so many football basketball all these different sports games where you come back from a huge deficit and you just can't pull the win you you just you get all the way there and then you can't finish it um I think that's about it. I'll break down different stuff as I go through each one here. Uh, but let's get into this. We'll start with uh, the South region uh, with Kansas in it. And I'll go round by round, I guess. I'll, I'll just go through the whole brackets before we go. Uh, and so Kansas, I'm taking Kansas over Austin P. Real surprise there. Um, I'm going to take UConn over Colorado, even though I think Colorado is a pretty good team. Um, but UConn's hot. And UConn is a is a better team than they played all year. Uh, and so uh, they finally seem to get it at least a little bit together, even though Cincinnati should have won that game if they would have just stopped celebrating for 
literally two seconds and play defense. Uh, Cincinnati wins that game, and UConn's not even in the field. Uh, but I'm going to take them over Colorado. Colorado still, I do like Colorado. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of inf- indifferent on that pick, but I'll go with UConn. Uh, Maryland, South Dakota State. Maryland, one of the tie in the top ten with talent, they just have really struggled down the stretch. They really struggled against Michigan, which I have no idea why. Um, Diamond Stone, uh, Melo Trimble seems passive as, at times, and Rashid Suleiman tends to take most of their shots um, when Trimble, or Trimble, <laughs> I can't even say his name, um, is uh, being a little passive. He gets passive and he'll disappear for games for a point. He'll attack still and do and do his thing, but sometimes he, he becomes a bit passive and uh, it, it tends to hurt them. And uh, sometimes it seems like Jake Lehman's the one trying to hit the big threes. He is, he is their best three-point shooter, um, but he tends to be the one taking some of those big threes instead of Suleiman or... Uh, tremble when they need them, uh, which is always kind of weird. It's kind of one of those scenarios where you're arguably your f- fourth or fifth best player on the court is taking your shot. Um, Cal Hawaii. Hawaii is a good team. Um, come, they come out of the whack. The, is it the whack? The, the, all these conferences are too hard to remember. They came out of the whack. I think they won it. I believe they're 27 and five or 29 and five, 27 and five maybe i don't know but they're pretty good uh they've got good guards and um th- they play well cal could be dangerous for the upset here because uh cal still young like i said top five talent uh probably in all of college basketball they probably they might have top 10 two top 10 picks uh probably three picks in the draft uh and so but they have struggled at times. I believe 23 and 10 on the year. They have struggled. So, but I'm gonna roll with Cal. Hawaii though, an upset pick. One team that I'll definitely be looking at here. What does the question mark do? Oh, there we go. Hawaii's 27 and five. Okay, there we go. All right, let's close out of that. Um, Arizona versus Vandy or Wichita State. I haven't been very impressed with uh, Arizona with the West Coast teams. If you, I live um, in the Midwest, so I don't get a lot of I don't get a lot of time to watch the West Coast games. I have a little bit more this year because um, my college classes have been at night opposed to during. I like to take my college classes early in the morning, uh, but this semester just didn't work out, and so I haven't got to watch the West Coast as much as I have or I've usually uh, come to watch them, uh, so I'm not as up on my Pac-12 as I should be. Uh, but I'm going to roll... See, the problem is, if Wichita State loses to Vandy, then I'm taking Arizona. If Wichita State beats or er, er, beats Vandy, I want to take Wichita State. So this is kind of one of those things where I hate the first four in scenario but this will I guess I'll take this as my first upset because I believe Wichita State will beat Vanderbilt Vanderbilt one of those teams that you could put in a different team over them uh, but I do like the pick of Vanderbilt in the in the tournament um, maybe South Carolina has an argument they were the better team in uh, the, the, the the SEC conference play Vanderbilt got beat by a bad Tennessee team even though Rick Barnes has done really good I think he's done really good at Tennessee uh, they did really well in the tournament uh, the SEC tournament but I think uh, Wichita State uh, beats out Vandy, and then they beat Arizona. Uh, Miami Buffalo, uh, I did not get to watch as many of the small conference tournaments as I usually do, uh, with classes being at night. Obviously, I get screwed out of some of my viewing time. Uh, And so I don't know a whole lot about Buffalo, uh, but I do like um, Miami with uh, McClellan and Rodriguez. Um, Feels like they've been, I feel like Rodriguez has been there forever, but um now years seem to take forever now that i'm in college like it's crap just takes forever um but buffalo i think miami's too much for buffalo so i'm going to take miami uh iowa temple is an interesting game i don't think temple is getting as much respect as they should uh against iowa iowa couldn't beat anybody iowa hasn't been able to beat anybody for a while they beat michigan which is I don't even, they beat Michigan at Michigan, and that's about their last quality, that's their quality win over a while. They really fell off down the stretch. They were all the way up. Did they make it to number three in the country, I believe? Uh, and then they've, they've just taken a downward plummet. Uh, and I think Dekozy out of Temple, uh, one of those guards, you know, like Kemba Walker, Napier, even you could say Ty, uh, Tyus Jones last year, um, 
for for Duke. And uh, just guards like that have really taken teams far into the tournament. I could, you know, when Stephen Curry was at uh, Davidson, um, I'm trying to think, Derrick Rose when he was at Memphis, just teams like that, that, that they can just get taken to the, uh, they can just take a, take a team deep into the tournament. A, a decent team without them. Um, even you could say Trey Burke with Michigan. Um, if he doesn't hit that shot with Kansas, they're done. Um, though he kind of cost them the national championship by getting into foul trouble, but I'm not going to go there. But I actually like Temple in this game against Iowa. Iowa has not played well. They give me no reason to pick them. It's like, I don't know, I've been watching these shows because I was waiting for this to come up. It took forever for whatever reason. But um, I've been, what am I trying to say? Oh, I've been listening to all these shows, and all of them are picking Iowa um, and, and not giving Temple a whole lot of respect. Temple didn't play good down the down the stretch, and they didn't play good, or not down the stretch, they didn't play good near the end, eh, I guess the stretch, but they didn't play good in the tournament, uh, they had a bad showing against UConn, uh, but I like them, they were the number one out of, they were the number one seed in the American, uh, and the American did put some teams in here with UConn, Cincinnati, Temple, is Tulsa in the American? I think Tulsa's in the American, Tulsa's in the American, um, is that it, did they put four in? I believe they put four in the tournament, and there was a good team in SMU in that conference uh, that was ineligible this year. Um, and then Villanova, I'm taking them over UNC Asheville. You guys know I like Villanova, or some of you know I like Villanova. Um, probably my favorite college basketball team. Um, with college basketball, there's so many games I like to follow, and same with like the NBA. I, try, I tend to follow a lot of teams, um, but Villanova is my favorite uh, in college basketball. But you know, I follow Villanova, Oregon, Michigan. Um, UConn, there, there, there's a chunk of them that I follow because there's so many games I can kind of keep up uh, with game, with teams that I enjoy and I like. Oklahoma is another one I, I tend to keep up with them, uh, but I like Villanova. They've struggled in the tournament uh, the last few years, years, but so has Kansas. Kansas hasn't uh, played extremely well in the past few tournaments. If you take last year's Duke out of it, Duke hasn't played that well in the last few tournaments. Um, they haven't made it very far. Indiana really hasn't played well. There are some powerhouse schools that have not played well, um, but they don't get as much recognition as struggling as Villanova does because Villanova hasn't performed well in the tournament. Uh, but last year they did play, that was one of those tough 8-9 not nine matchups, um, such as North Carolina here will get against Providence most likely, I believe. Providence will win that, but there are tough 8-9 matchups that you can get, like when Wichita State was a 1 seed and they got uh, Kentucky as their 9 seed. There are just some tough matchups that uh, that present themselves. Villanova got it with eventual champion UConn. Last year, they got it with NC State, who was a pretty good team. Uh, they, they NC State still has Cat Barber. I don't know why I'm tapping my fingers on my hand, County. Uh, they had Cat Barber, who's still on that team. Uh, is the only reason NC State won any games this year. Same with Stefan Moody out of Ole Miss. They're the only reason those teams won any games. I don't even know how long this video is now. I've just been talking. This first bracket is going to take forever. Uh, but I'm going to take Villanova or Temple. They played earlier this year. Everybody thought it would be a great game. Villanova pretty much handled uh, Temple. So I'll take Villanova over Temple, uh, though Temple with the cozy. Uh, but but uh, Villanova has good guards, tend to take you far. Um, their depth down low, uh, concerns me, but, uh, Reynolds got a lot of playing time with Ochefu's ankle, uh, not a hundred percent. Uh, so Reynolds got some experience in the Big East tournament. Uh, Miami, uh, Wichita State, uh, is my prediction. I'm going to take Miami. I like Miami, um, though I did like Miami, what was it, two years ago with Shane Larkin, and they got, they get, who'd they get upset by? Were they, they get upset by the 15? No, they, I forget who they got upset by, but I had them that year. I like Maryland over Cal. I think Maryland's experience, um, even though Mel, Melo Trimble's not that experienced, um, Rashid Suleiman is experienced. So is Jake Lehman. He's pretty, he's more experienced than Trimble and um, uh, Diamond Stone. Uh, I think the youth with the veteran leadership there gets Maryland to the Elite Eight, and they will take on Kansas. Is a dangerous game for Kansas. UConn seems to have that magic in 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 March. They just seem to have that magic, as you saw with them making it to the conference uh, championship. They need to do at least 
make it pretty far to get into the tournament, and they took care of that. Uh, so we've got the matchup of the one in Kansas, five in Maryland, three in Miami against the two Villanova. Um, I'm going to save my Elite Eight, and we'll move on, and we'll come back when I get to the Elite Eight in the other brackets. We're taking... Uh, North Carolina. I think Fairleigh Dickinson beats Florida Gulf Coast in the in the 16 matchup, uh, but obviously I'm taking North Carolina over Florida uh, Gulf Coast or Fairleigh Dickinson uh, in the in the round of 64. I'm gonna take Providence over USC. USC has some good guards to go against Chris Dunn. Um, I think Ben Bentel will be the difference for Providence uh, in that game. Uh, he he's shown it. He's able. He's he dropped what was it 38 I believe on. Um, who was it? Now I forget who he dropped 38 on. It was a game before they played Villanova. I forget who, who was it on. All right, it, it was a Butler. Why do I think it's Butler? No, did Seton Hall... Okay, you know what? Let me stop messing around trying to think. He had 38 points. I forget who it was against. Um, and that is going to be a tough matchup for North Carolina. Uh, Chattanooga and Stony Brook, two teams that could pull the upset. I think they got bad draws. Um, I would have really liked Chattanooga over, which five seed was it? I would have liked Chattanooga if they would have gotten Purdue or Baylor a little bit more than I do against Indiana. Even though Indiana's last showing, they turned the ball over a lot uh, and did not play well against Michigan. They blew that lead they had over Michigan near the end of the game. Uh, and so, but uh, no upset here for me so far. And I think uh, Tyler Ulis will take down Stony Brook. Um, I think Stony Brook is a good team. They just got a really bad matchup getting Kentucky. They would have had a better chance against Cal. Really, Duke. I might have picked them against Duke. Um, Stony Brook over Duke. But I'm not going to do that. Um, I have Michigan beating Tulsa. And then it will be an interesting matchup. Michigan has started playing better once they found out Karis LeVert wasn't playing anymore. Uh, they had that weird loss to Iowa where Iowa was struggling and they needed that win to kind of clinch the NCAA tournament so they didn't have to make this run in the Big Ten tournament. Um, Tulsa is kind of, Tulsa is probably the biggest question mark on how they made it in the field over Monmouth and, uh, St. Mary's and, um, South Carolina. Um, I, I think personally I would have put Monmouth in over, or over Tulsa and had Michigan playing someone else, not Monmouth, uh, in this matchup. Um, but I like Michigan to beat Tulsa. Tulsa has, th they lost three times to Memphis. Uh, Memphis, not a great team did make it to the finals but if you think about it they only had to beat really one quality opponent because Tulane had the upset Tulane not a great team um and so I'm gonna take Michigan and I'm gonna actually take Michigan this is gonna be was the second upset both teams out of the I'm taking the two teams out of the uh the the play-in game what are they I don't even know what they're called anymore round one the first four, whatever they want to call them. I'm going to take both of them, Michigan and Wichita State, uh, over their six seeds. Um, I believe in the past few tournaments, one of them has actually won. Was it was it Tennessee? Was it Tennessee two years ago that made it out of there and made it to the Sweet Six? Was it Tennessee? It's so it's hard for it's. There's a lot of basketball that you have to remember, and sometimes it doesn't go well. I like Stephen F. Austin. Uh, I made, I actually made that pick, I believe, when they upset whoever they upset. I can't. This is too much to remember. When they made that upset two years ago, um, I had them pick to win that game. Um, I believe they were in the in the bracket, the the number one seed bracket, uh, number one overall seeded bracket. Uh, as I remember, uh, Wisconsin Pitt. Um, I still remember. I went to James or uh, James Robinson, the point guard for Pitt. Um, I was at a game like three years ago where he airballed a shot against Notre Dame and those, and he got the, you know how they say airball every time he gets the ball. He literally didn't take a shot for like 30 minutes of game time. It was ridiculous. And they kept doing it for the full 30 minutes. Um, I actually am going to take Pitt over Wisconsin. Pitt, one of those teams on the bubble, didn't know if they would get in or not. Um, and Wisconsin, uh, one of those teams is kind of weird. They had a horrible start to the season. I believe they were nine and nine at one point. Horrible start to the season, um, but they closed out strong. They went 11 of their last 14, I believe. And so, but I'm going to take Pitt. Um, believe Pitt uh, just gets it done. They got that huge win they needed over Syracuse to get in the tournament. 
as we found out, it didn't really matter for Syracuse. They still got in. I'm going to take Xavier over Weber State. Um, I did get to see that Weber State, um, them win their conference tournament. That doesn't make me pick them over the two seed, though. Uh, but let's get this down to the Elite Eight. Let me check time real quick, just so we can see. I've already been recording for 20 minutes, so I should probably pick this up. Um, but I guess this is just the initial. This is just me talking, running through things in my head. Uh, and you guys can be, if you guys didn't want to see a long one, um, if you made it to this point, I guess you want a shorter one. They will be shorter in the future. Um, I'll be uploading a bunch of these. They will be more compressed than 20 minutes. Um, but we're going to be taking Xavier uh, over Pitt, West Virginia over Michigan. Um, and then I'm going to be taking, this is a hard one. These two are hard. Um, because I believe Providence could pull the upset. Chris Dunn, uh, I love him as a player. Um, one uh, Big East player of the year. But I, I just can't take him over North Carolina in my initial bracket. I can't. And then um, I'm actually going to take Indiana over Kentucky. I think Yogi Ferrell, Tyler Eulis, um, uh shoot it out. And I think Indiana gets the W. They'll be hungry after that loss to Michigan. Or it could be the complete opposite and they could get destroyed by Kentucky. Uh, it could go either way. But we're going to come down here to the bottom. Hopefully I can speed this up a little bit. I won't talk as much about the, the smaller seeds. Um, I'm going to take Oregon. I'm going to take St. Joe's. I uh, saw them beat VCU today uh, in the 8-10. Uh, they looked very good uh, against VCU. But sometimes you can't gauge how some of these smaller conferences, how they look. Uh, but I'm going to take St. Joe's. Uh, Cincinnati, though, I do I do like, um, like the coach. And I do like some of the players they have. But I am going to take St. Joe's. It uh, won't really matter because I'm taking Baylor. Or I'm taking Oregon. So we can just wipe that out. Um, this is another 12-5 and 13-4 in Duke and Baylor uh, that could lose. Uh, Yale plays very good, uh, very good basketball. They want to slow it down. Um, Baylor not as good as they have been in years past. Duke's bench is extremely short, and I do not have Duke playing Oregon. Um, I am going to take Baylor over Yale. I do think Yale gives them a heck of a game. And I'm going to say Duke's bench finally catches up to them, and I'm going to have them getting upset by UNC Willings. Wilmington, I can't even read. UNC Wilmington, and then I have Baylor beating UNC Wilmington, making it Oregon Baylor. Um, the UNC Wilmington is just a pick because I'm going to have Baylor beating Duke anyway, so I might as well pick that upset there. That's what I'm thinking. Northern Iowa, Texas. Texas is really, really meh. Like, I don't really, eh, They're just kind of, eh. Um, they play really good, and then they play really bad. And then they'll play really good, and then they'll upset Oklahoma, and then they'll play really bad against like Texas Tech, even though Texas Tech didn't make the field. Um, but I'm going to take Texas over Northern Iowa, uh, and then I'm going to take Texas A&M over Green Bay. I do like Green Bay in this game. If there's a 314 that I like the most, I like Green Bay over Texas A&M. Carrington Love is a very good player for Green Bay, and uh, if he, he could go off against Texas A&M. Texas A&M, though, I think is too big, and they, they disrupt and... Uh, I don't think Green Bay can quite pull it out. I'm taking Gary Payton the second uh, for Oregon State. I did get to watch actually a few of their games in the tournament. Um, I have a I have a friend who um, pays for the Pac-12 Network. I still can't get it with DirecTV. They won't give it to me, and so he has it though. And I was able to watch some of the Pac-12 games, which was nice. Oklahoma, probably the team I like most in the tournament even though they kind of fell off down the stretch. Um, but their point, literally point zero one zero zero one away from Buddy Heald getting that shot off of his fingers and been playing Kansas, what was that, yesterday? Uh, I thought for sure that shot was in, and it was just barely on his fingertips. But they're that away from um, having a much better resume, even maybe being Big Pell champions and maybe being a number one seed. Uh I think Gary Payton II, though, gives them some issues, uh, but I believe, but uh, if I'm right, Oregon State plays a zone, which is not good against Oklahoma with Woodard, Cousins, Heald, and Spangler all being able to knock in threes. That zone is going to be rough for them. And I'm going to have Texas. I know I just said they're meh, and I don't really know how good they are, but in this bottom bracket, all three Big 12 teams make it to the Elite Eight. 
Oklahoma, Texas, and Baylor. I have them all making it to the Elite Eight, uh, and Oregon being the lone Pac-12 team uh, making it here. Kind of interesting that I put Oregon State. Gary Payton, uh, one of those players, I guess, that could carry his team. Seven seed. There's a chance, you know, upset against uh, Oklahoma. I believe if they upset Oklahoma, Oregon State makes it to the makes it to the um, Elite Eight. Actually, I'm going to the Sweet 16, not the Elite Eight. Let me point that out. Um, but I believe Oregon State would make it all the way to the Elite Eight if they beat Oklahoma. I don't. I think they beat Texas A&M or Texas. Uh, in the final bracket here, we've got uh, Virginia. Um, I'm going to take Virginia over Hampton. I uh, actually didn't even get to see Hampton play, so I don't have much to say on them. I'm going to take Texas Tech over Butler. Uh, Tubby Smith, great job at Texas Tech. It's kind of funny. He he goes to Texas Tech. He's got them in the tournament, and Minnesota has just gone literally downhill. Minnesota is just complete garbage, uh, and it is, it's just kind of funny to me. Uh, Arkansas Little Rock against Purdue. I did get to see Arkansas Little Rock play. I want to take them. And you know what? Because I'm going to have Iowa State advancing, we will take Arkansas Little Rock over Purdue. We're going to take Arkansas Little Rock over Purdue, and I'm going to have Iowa State advancing. And Virginia got an easy 8-9 draw. I can't believe they got the easiest 8-9 draw. It makes no sense to me. Why did why did Kansas get UConn and Colorado, USC and Providence for North Carolina, and Virginia gets Texas Tech and Butler? Like, Virginia, they just, like... They just cream puffed this up for Virginia, except for the kind of higher seeds. Seton Hall, Isaiah Whitehead, amazing performance against Villanova. Uh, the was the last night. Uh, Utah, who got literally destroyed by Oregon, destroyed. Uh, but we're gonna move Utah on over Fresno State, uh, who upset San Diego State for the tournament bid, and San Diego State didn't get in. Uh, so that's a big loss for San Diego State. I'm going to take Seton Hall and Isaiah Whitehead to make it to the Sweet 16, knocking off Utah down here, Michigan State, Michigan State. Oh, look, Michigan State. Okay, and uh, I'm going to take Dayton, who chucked up a bunch of bricks. Uh, I thought the last time I watched them, their last game, they just missed everything. It was it was pretty bad, and they I think it was a pretty close game still. Um, but I'm going to take them over Syracuse, even though I probably should be taking Syracuse. It doesn't really matter. We're taking Michigan State. Forget about that game. Um, and I move Michigan State all the way on. Even though I do believe Isaiah Whitehead and Seton Hall will give Michigan State a heck of a game, but they're still young. Uh, Seton Hall is young, and I don't think they have what it takes to get it done on the second weekend. They get upset by Michigan – or not upset. They get taken down by Michigan State. And I'll go ahead and move Iowa State on, taking down Virginia. Uh, I like Niang as a player, and I, I know it's not that I really like the Big 12. That's just how it's gone. I liked Iowa State and Oklahoma, but Baylor and Texas. But I, but I like Baylor's matchup against Duke, if Duke advances. And so I, I'm taking Baylor, and I, I just like Texas's matchup against A&M. So that's the only reason I took Texas. It's not like that I like Texas and Baylor a ton. But after saying that, I'm taking Oklahoma and Oregon. So we got Oklahoma, Oregon, and Iowa State, Michigan State into the Elite Eight. Up at the top, we're going to be taking we're taking Villanova. Um, but Kansas, Maryland. Does Maryland finally get it together? If they got it together, they could beat Kansas. But I'm not going to bang on that, so we're taking Kansas. I'm not going to bank on Maryland. Maybe near my final bracket, I'll take Maryland because who the heck knows. Um, I'm going to take North Carolina over Indiana and West Virginia over North Car or over Xavier. West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Iowa State are the two teams out of the or the three teams out of the Big 12 I like the most. Um, Kansas, I like them, but they just do not. They don't have. Neither does West Virginia. I don't know what I'm talking about, but Kansas doesn't have the go to get that bucket when you need it like Villanova has Josh Hart North Carolina has Marcus Page um Maryland, Maryland doesn't, I, don't, I don't know about Maryland my, my Miami has McClellan um I already say Iowa State has Niang um Oregon I guess Tyler Dorsey um Michigan State Denzel Valentine Oklahoma Buddy Heald and so we are to making final four predictions who am I taking? North Carolina, West Virginia, interesting matchup there. Kansas, Villanova, 
this is the initial bracket, so I'm taking Villanova. Say whatever you want. I'm taking Villanova. And I'm taking Oklahoma. So we have one matchup all set. Oklahoma, Villanova, Final Four, and in the other Final Four, Michigan State. And West Virginia or North Carolina. I have a bunch of two seeds making the Final Four. This is never going to happen. Uh, I'm going to take North Carolina over West Virginia. I want to take West Virginia, but I think North Carolina's size gets to them. Um, and I think West Virginia's press, I think it works early. I think it's a heck of a game for the first 20, 30 minutes. And I think West Virginia has the lead at halftime. But I think North Carolina uh, figures it out at halftime and takes the W. And so in the national championship game, it's going to be Oklahoma and Buddy Heald against North Carolina and Marcus Page. If I take West Virginia, it's Michigan State versus Oklahoma, which would be amazing because that's probably people's two... Uh, player of the year picks uh, Tyler Eulis up there with them, but Michigan State's Denzel Valentine and Oklahoma's Buddy Heald are probably the two top candidates for National Player of the Year. Uh, and I'm going to go with my opinion on the National Player of the Year, and that's Oklahoma. I'm going to take Buddy Heald and the Sooners to win it all. Now that I sit here, probably not the this is not the greatest bracket, but this is the opening bracket, so you know that's what how it goes. And I'm gonna predict a final score of 77 for Oklahoma to 70. Let's go 73 for North Carolina. Much closer than that, North Carolina misses a shot to tie it up 75-73 or 75-75, and then they follow Buddy Heald. He makes two free throws. They missed the shot game over there we go all righty so i guess we'll click to enter all of these uh but that is the that is the for uh, i gotta follow this out okay we won't do that right now okay yeah i picked oklahoma to cut down the nets in houston okay so that is the first bracket guys hopefully let me look at it here yeah here we go uh there's just the bracket in review final four being north carolina michigan state villanova and oklahoma uh, that's just my opinion. Initial bracket and all bracket and all of that stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for everyone who stuck around for the extremely long video that was. Let me move this back to the center. That was 32 minutes and 22 seconds. So if you stuck around and listened to this whole thing, kudos to you. Check back in. I'll have a bunch of brackets coming out. I might actually break down each section of the bracket for you in a little bit more detail giving you my reasons a little bit more in-depth than I even did now, uh, but we will see. Uh, just to remind everybody, this is going up on Sunday night. There may be a few more maybe that go up on Sunday night, uh, but Monday off day for Let's Plays. Uh, keep it tuned in, all brackets and different stuff like that on Monday. So just wanted to let you guys know that. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace out.